Hello everyone. Welcome to another lecture of the course Digital Signal Processing. In the previous lecture, we have seen the concept of minimum phase systems and maximum phase systems. And we have seen that if a system has all the poles and zeros inside the unit circle, then it is referred as the minimum phase system. And in minimum phase system, the phase deviation is zero, that is minimum. Moreover, in the maximum phase system, all the zeros are outside the unit circle and the phase deviation is m pi where m is the number of zeros and this value m pi is the maximum possible deviation in the phase. For our considered example, the phase for minimum phase system was obtained as this. That is we can see that at 0 and at pi both the values are equal that is equal to 0 and the deviation is least. Moreover, in the second example, at omega equal to 0, it was 0 and at omega equal to pi, it was minus pi. And therefore, this deviation was maximum in the maximum phase system. Now, let us go into depth and see some of its properties. Now, if we consider the derivative of the angle or phase with respect to the frequency omega, that is dd omega of angle that is angle of h of omega this represents nothing but rate of change of omega with respect to the angular frequency or it is nothing but variation or change or deviation in phase with respect to the angular frequency omega and this derivative corresponds to delay in the system and we have seen that this deviation or variation is minimum for minimum phase systems. Whereas this variation is maximum for maximum phase systems. And this simply indicates that the delay in the minimum phase system is minimum. That is we have minimum delay and in the case of maximum phase systems we have maximum possible delay. Let's look at some other property. Now we had considered the example for minimum phase system as h1 of z is equal to 1 plus 1 by 2 z inverse. Now if we take the inverse z of this, what we get is h1 of n is equal to 1 and 1 by 2. Only two coefficients where this 1 is located at n equal to 0. And if we take the inverse z for the maximum phase system example, which was h2 of z equal to 1 by 2 plus z inverse, what we get is h2 of n is equal to 1 by 2 comma 1. And this 1 by 2 is located at n equal to 0. Now we can observe that the value of h1 of 0 is greater than value of h2 of 0 means the value situated at n equal to 0 for a minimum phase system is higher than that present at n equal to 0 for maximum phase system. And if we generalize this, the value of ma maximum phase system at n equal to 0 will be less than or equal to the value for a minimum phase system 
located at n equal to 0 and by this we can see that the energy is concentrated more towards n equal to 0 in the minimum phase system. So what we can say that energy is concentrated towards 0 towards n equal to 0 for minimum phase systems. This is again an important property. Now let's move further and see something else. Uh, let the z transform of a system be h of z and we have seen that it is ratio of the z transform of output that is y of z upon input that is x of z. Now let this system has have input as x of n and output as y of n. So this x of n and the output as y of n and the impulse response is h of n whose z transform is nothing but this h of z. Now we have also seen that this h of z is causal if ROC is exterior to the outermost circle, outermost pole and it is stable if ROC includes the unit circle. And if we need the system to be stable as well as causal, stable plus causal, then for this the region of convergence must be exterior to the outermost pole moreover it should include the unit circle and this is possible only if all the poles are located inside the unit circle. For this all the poles are inside the unit circle. Now let this system h of z be a minimum phase system. So the, this h of n is a minimum phase system. Which means that the zeros and poles both are inside unit circle. Now let there be another system such that we give input as y of n and receive output as x of n and such kind of system is known as the inverse of this original system. So consider another system whose impulse response is h hat of n such that if we have y of n as an input we obtain x of n as an output and if we find the z transform that is h hat of z it would be nothing but x of z upon y of z and from this equation it is simply 1 upon h of z or h of z inverse. So it is nothing but h of z to the power minus 1. And here these two systems are nothing but inverse of each other. So what we have is h hat of z is equal to x of z upon y of z which is equal to h of z inverse. Now if this is inverse of h of z it implies that the poles of h of z are zeros of h hat of z 
and moreover the zeros of h of z are poles of h hat of z and originally we had considered that this h of z is a minimum phase system and for that the zeros as well as poles are inside the unit circle and if an uh, even if we change the poles and zeros that we invert this system the poles and zeros for the new systems are still inside the unit circle means these both the things are still inside the unit circle this indicates that this h hat of z is also a minimum phase system moreover since the po uh, poles are inside the unit circle it satisfies the condition for causality also as well as for stability so this h, h hat of z is causal as well as stable and this is a very important point that we have seen at this moment so before ending this lecture let us summarize what we have seen so here we have seen that a minimum phase system have minimum delay and a maximum phase systems have maximum delay the minimum phase systems energy is concentrated more towards n equal to 0 and this is just because h minimum or at n equal to 0 that is at for minimum phase systems the value at n equal to 0 is greater than or equal to the value at n equal to 0 for maximum phase system we have also seen that if a system is a minimum phase system then it is guaranteed that its inverse is also a minimum phase system as well as it is causal as well as stable let's stop here thank you